This program is, is, is a useful program. The idea is to um, enlighten we, the youth, enlighten ourselves about policy, governance, and nation building. And, and, and because of the objective of this show, I want to ask Mr. Ademola, what plans does Atiku have for the youth? Well, I mean, the young people are a part of society. Um, the problem that we have now is the, the, there's, um, there's no hope, you know, basically for young people. Young people don't feel any sense of hope. Young people have lost hope in um, Nigeria so to speak, and a lot of people are traveling out. And um, the reasons are, you know, about the worsening economy. Um, just a few years ago, we know where we were, and now we know where we are. So Atiku Abubakar's thoughts are around that. And he's someone who sees it more like um, other young people must be brought to a certain level. Opportunities should be created for them, especially in the areas of um, vocational studies, in the area of technical expertise, and so on and so forth, you know, that in that regard, um, you know, the rest of us, you know, we, if the economy is right, if the environment is right, we will be able to thrive. You know, we have a music industry um, that is thriving. We have a lot of creativity in this country, even here, you know, in the studio. There's a lot of creativity, but the opportunities, we are not able to maximize them um, because the society basically is um, kind of frustrates us as young people. And as young people, there's only so much that we can um, bear in a country, and that's why you find a lot of people just traveling out. And you know, the, the sad part for me is that most of these people are never going to come back, you know, um, unless, you know, there's a time where Nigeria gets better and then they decided to, they decided to come back and invest. So it's that restoration of hope. Um, the, and then you have the idea that Nigeria, to, to a lot of young people, there's no, there's no definition of Nigeria. As a young person in America, you'll be able to talk about the American dream. Um, in some other countries, you'll be able to identify what the country stands for, but nobody really understands what Nigeria is about. Um, and that's why Atiku came up with that he's the unifier, he's the one who can unify the country, he's the one who can um, um, bring everybody to the table, so to speak. And that's because, you know, he has um, white tentacles. I think I know what you're thinking. No, no, no. no I, mean, I, 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 <laughs> I think I know what you're thinking. No, 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 no. I know what you know. I know what you think I'm thinking. What I <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you keep saying the unifier, unifier. What what does it mean by the unifier? Nigeria, in, in specific terms. The country is divided. Right. He's the one who and, can bring us together. Bring us. Why does he think that? I mean, because he is the only candidate in this race that can easily. Um, 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 pinpoint friends in all the 36 states, you know, more than one, more not, than two. Not Ashiwaju. Bola Tinubu is, is more of a Lagos figure, oh. you know. Bola Tinubu is more of a Lagos figure. Look, when Atiku Abubaka was at customs, when he was at customs, um, he, there was a, someone, you know, a lot of, shortly after the um, civil war, um, after it ended, a lot of um, our brothers, our Igbo brothers, had left the country. One man was trying to come back, and then customs officers were trying to harass them. They would check what you have, and so on and so mm -hmm. forth. And, you know, he asked him what the problem was, resolved the problem for him, and they became close friends. You know, that man is Joseph Ugbe, the owner of Bolingo Hotel. Right. You know, so that's the kind of person Atiku is. And I think a lot of it has to do with how he was brought up. Um, 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 his community is a Fulani commun community, but within um, another ethnicity, the Chamber ethnicity. Uh, but he, so he grew up having to interact with people who were not necessarily Fulani. And so he's that kind of person who doesn't see ethnicity first. He doesn't see you as a Yoruba person first um, before seeing you as a Nigerian, you know. So that quality for me is outstanding. And for those of us who, who still believe in Nigeria, who are able to hold on to the concept of Nigeria, that Nigeria belongs to all of us, um, um, that's the kind of person that we want to be with. So when he says he's a unifier, that's what it means. It means that there's divisions. Um, Nigeria, the loyalty to Nigeria is not there. You have people who are loyal to the Yoruba nation, people who are loyal to the Igbo nation, people who are loyal to the Fulani ethnicity. There's nobody rooting for Nigeria. And this man says, 
I'm the unifier. I can bring everybody together. You don't think Peter Obi is a better vote. unifier? Uh, I mean, Peter, I've seen Peter Obi candidacy come from the past what, two, three months after he joined the Labour Party and got the ticket to be the presidential candidate. I have seen rallies and matches done in literally every state in this country. North, South, West, I think, East. I think... And, and, and one million matches. I think a, a better appellation for him might be a maverick, you know, might be a maverick or a populist in that sense. He's not, um, um, you have to be proven to be a unifier. Atiku Abubakar is somebody who basically staked himself um, as vice president. And, and that's one reason why some people don't like him in the north. He's somebody who, the south, the so-called south, has never had a bigger friend, um, a bigger politician friend in the north. Um, than Atiku Abubakar. As a matter of fact, you know, one of his motivations for being in politics is um, the vision of his late mentor, Sheo Musa Yaradua. Sheo Musa Yaradua said he was going to build a bridge from the north of Nigeria to the south of Nigeria. He wanted to be that bridge. Um, um, so the Yaradua Center, which Atiku was one of the major brains behind the building of it, it has, um, it has there's this um, 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 sculpture, there's this um, artwork, basically, that is like a, a bridge but the bridge is uncompleted. So we are hoping that by 2023... <laughs> completed will, bridge. Yes, this bridge will be completed, <laughs> and people will understand once again what it means to be Nigerian, what it means to share this thing, where, you know, you know people don't see you first as, as a Yoruba man, you know, before, before they see you, where you probably have to wear this kind of cap before you can get, <laughs> get anything done, get into some circles. Um, so he's that one person that we believe can be that. And I think, mm. you know, young people will um, 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 benefit greatly from that kind of um, Ta governance. Talking about Article being a unifier, what do you, what is his, um, his view on the Muslim Muslim ticket of the APC? Uh, his view basically is what he, he believed in before. Um, in 2007, and he said this, in 2007 he was in the same party with Bola Ahmed Tinubu, and Bola Ahmed Tinubu wanted to be vice president. Um, but Atiku had to reject it and say, look, you can't. It's simply not fair. Um, you've had eight years of the presidency in the Southwest, um, and then now you want to be vice president from the Southwest. So, um, and then where's the fairness? We have Christians in this country. Um, this country is not just the Muslims. So, uh, and he went and picked um, Senator Ben Obi, Senator Ben Obi, um, you know, and that was his running mate at that time. So that's his view, basically, that it is unfair to the Christian population to have a Muslim Muslim ticket in a multi-ethnic country. Uh, in a multi-ethnic country, that such a ticket is is the opposite of what it stands for. It's the opposite of a unifier. That's a very <laughs> divisive ticket. So, right so there. you personally think that it matters the faith of our candidate. Oh, it does, you see, because, because one of the things that I've, I've, I've been seeing with this black movement um, recently is that, it, like the black movement abroad, yeah. you know, a lot of it started under Donald black Trump, lives matter. Black Lives Matter and, and those things, is that representation matters, you know. Um, um, coming into the studio, for instance, the fact that I see a lady behind the camera, you know, if I have my, if I have my daughter with me, what he says to her is, oh, you mean I can also become a camera woman? Mm -hmm. You know, I can also do this kind of thing. And, 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 and it's because of those who have paved the way um, in the past that, you know, a lot of people are able to get into certain spaces. So it matters a lot when you look into the hierarchy of the governance of your country and you can see a Muslim, you can see a Christian, which are the major religions. Um, you can see those represented on that ticket. But if you look into it and see... Um, a Muslim Muslim ticket, it sends a signal into the minds of young people as Christians, you know, that perhaps the governance of the country is not for you. And guess what's going to happen? People are going to want out of that arrangement. Because if you are saying to us that we cannot be a part of this, then why do you even want us to be a part of it in any way? If we can't be a part of it at that level. And I think, you know, it's really, it's, it's for me, it's, um, it's kind of a, it's almost a slap on the face of Northern Christians basically, to say that they are not good enough. And I'm happy. I'm happy that a lot of Christians in the government are, are you know, uh, making it known. Uh, look, we are not comfortable with what's going on. We are not comfortable with it, you know. Um, um, you have a presidential campaign council. Lushibaju is not there. He's a Christian. You'd have expected yeah. that, you know, he should. Dogara, Yakubu Dogara is not there. Baba Lawal is not there. Boss Mustafa, the SGF, is not there. They are saying, look, if we are not good enough, then, then you